Joining me now is MSNBC correspondent Jacob Soboroff, who's been covering this crisis since it began two years ago. His new book is Separated, Inside an American Tragedy, a detailed graphic account of the Trump administration's horrendous policy of family separations. Jacob, first of all, this is groundbreaking work. All your reporting, all your original reporting in this book uh, is extraordinary. So thank you for bringing this to us, to the public. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, what is your latest reporting, though? I wanted to ask you about the infection rates, which you've been reporting on at ICE facilities. Well, I think it's important to note that here we are two years after family separations. And yet again, as you mentioned, there are still children at risk of being separated from their parents, this time due to the coronavirus, which has run rampant uh, throughout these ICE detention centers and family detention centers. As of today, there's over 800 people detained in ICE custody that have the coronavirus. The government won't commit to releasing the families and children together. And advocates are saying uh, they must, they can. And if they wanted to, they could do it as we're speaking right now. And again, that's why I wanted to write this book uh, two years Years after this policy, uh, things are arguably worse than they were two years ago, although uh, the 5,400 uh, children who were taken from their parents would tell you there's not much worse uh, than being separated from, from your parents by the United States government. And what you document also is when this policy first started, uh, one of the officials discovered that there was a list. Well, it was, it was being reported by The New York Times, I guess, first, that there was a list of the, the children who are being separated. And so his response was, Mr. Lloyd's response, I think his name was, was to get rid of the list so that they could not be tracked. It's almost unbelievable to, when I heard that. Dan Diamond from Politico first reported that this incident uh, happened and uh, I was, uh, not just intrigued, but I was almost obsessed to find out what exactly did go on. And Scott Lloyd, the director of ORR, Office of Refugee Resettlement, he had the custody. He was the custodian of the 10,000 plus kids uh, in the custody of the federal government. Uh, and his first instinct when the leak list to Caitlin Dickerson was to get rid uh, of the list. And if it were not for the career officials in ORR uh, who uh, decided not to do that, despite what they saw as an order, a critical linkage between the children and their parents, something that Scott Lloyd disputes today, um, could have been destroyed and they could have never been reunited. Jacob, there's also, uh, there's so much in this book, there's so much rich, rich detail, everyone has to read it. But tell me about Katie Miller, who at the time uh, was, had, had the job down there and was working on this whole issue at DHS, or it, was it HHS, which was her job before? She's now with the vice president, of course. She and was at this DHS. This you have from the book. Let me read the quote, because you were speaking to her. She was at DHS, and you have, her, you have her saying, my family and colleagues told me that when I have kids, I'll think about the separations differently, but I don't think so. DHS sent me to the border to see the separations for myself to try to make me more compassionate, but it didn't work. It didn't work, you ask? I will never forget what I saw. Seriously, are you a white nationalist, I asked? Exasperated? No, but I believe if you come to America, you should assimilate. Why do we need to have little Havana? Why don't you expand it's, on uh, that? It's unbelievable to hear today, um, even though she said this to me um, directly. And I'm not the only one that she said this to, uh, Andrea. First of all, Katie Turr, our colleague, was sitting with me at the table uh, when she said this. Uh, it's being disputed now by, by the White House and Kayleigh McEnany. But um, ask Katie Turr. Ask the uh, several other sources who have come forward and said to me since the book's been published and before the book's been published that Katie Miller said pre, uh, similar things uh, to what I report in the book. Uh, to them. Uh, this is not the first time uh, that I've heard a version of that statement from, from Katie Miller. Uh, and that just goes to show the thinking that went into this policy or the lack thereof. This was not something that was done with the best interests of the children in mind. This was done from a political perspective. And that is why, you know, what I've come to learn is that there were so many heroes fighting back against uh, people who had the attitude like Katie Miller did. The idea that you don't need a little Havana, the president's in Florida today. Ask people on the ground in Little Havana you know, what they think of what the pres uh, what uh, Katie Miller had to say, uh, you know, now representing the vice president of the United States uh, as the communications director for him. Jacob, how many children are now separated, still separated? Do we know? 
We don't, Andrea. And I asked Lee Gallant from the ACLU, who were it not for his lawsuit, the Miss L lawsuit that forced the government to reunite uh, the 5,400 separated children um, and stop the Trump administration from separating them, it wouldn't have even happened. Uh, these children may still be separated from their parents. And Lee Gallant says uh, that while the original 2,800 from the zero tolerance policy are for the most part accounted for, a, a thousand plus children that were separated before the policy um, officially started, it's very hard to track them down because of shoddy record keeping, uh, the same type of shoddy record keeping uh, that we talked about in this incident with Scott Lloyd. They did not plan adequately to put the children and families back together. And at the end of the day, there were people fighting them from within the government to make sure that was not the case. But politics and the Trump administration's uh, immigration philosophy, you know, overtook that. And, and torture is the word that Physicians for Human Rights uses to describe what happened to these children as a result. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.